Test one, two, three. Test. Testing one. Yep. Testing two. You're good. All right. Right on.
Welcome back, fans, to the home opener here between the IU Southeast Grenadiers and the Simmons College of Kentucky Falcons. Grenadiers looking to start the season hot here against these Falcons. Grenadiers starting five, starting Anthony Wells Jr. at the point, rounding out with Jacoby Hendricks, the junior guard out of Jefferson Town, Kentucky. Number 11, Glenn Hill. Number 12, Javon Jackson. And the senior forward, number 32, Christian Stewart, with the starters here tonight for the Grenadiers. Falcons with the opening possession here. As that ball is out of bounds, and it will be Grenadier basketball. Falcons starting five, rounding out to be number 10, Trey Radcliffe. Number 11, Jonathan Henry. Number 21, Cameron Bartman. Number 23, James Moore. And the sophomore, number 25, Philip Richards, Jr. out of Griffin, Georgia. Grenadiers looking to get on the board first here, early and often. This offense looks to click. Drive on the basket, no good there by Hendricks. Falcons pushing the other way. Three ball, no good. That miss by Moore. Flint Hill on the floater, no good. Had a good look at the basket there in transition, just couldn't get the basket to fall. Still 0-0, your score here with 18 minutes and 45 seconds left to play. Trying to get it going inside, but that ball is stolen. Grenadiers headed the other way. Hill on the drive, and he nails it home for the first two points of the season here for the Grenadiers, going to no other than Glenn Hill himself. Glenn Hill, a senior guard out of Louisville, Kentucky, 6'4", 195 pounds. He is a stud. Let me tell you, folks, stud. Deers here with the inbounds. Wells with the point here at the top of the key. Nice little screen on the drive and a foul will be called. Sending Wells to the line for two shots. By the numbers here, fans, for all you listening out there, the IU Southeast Grenadiers are 3-0 and against Simmons College. Looking to make that 4-0 here tonight. And he nails them both, making it 4-0 your score. Let me update the score for you there, folks. Four to nothing. Looking inside, off his foot. No whistle blown. Grenadiers playing some stout defense here early on as another missed opportunity there by the Falcons. Wales pushing the ball up here, top of the key. Off to Hill, Hill on the jab, Hill on the drive. And a blocking foul is called. Every player in this starting lineup is six foot and above. Something we did not see a lot of last year. Playing that bigger lineup could be of an advantage to these Grenadiers. Nothing going there as the Falcons here are pushing, still looking for their first basket of the game as a three ball here in the corner. He has nailed home there by number 23, James Moore. He's from Dunbar, West Virginia, folks. Six four guard. Establishing that senior leadership, James Moore getting the first basket there for the Falcons. Glenn Hill trying to respond with a three of his own, but no good. Rebounded there by Bartman. Here 
here on the floor currently at 6'10". He's from Tenley Park, Illinois. Looking inside and a push off is called on Bartman. You know, you can't do that, folks. You can't use your forearm to extend on the play to try to establish position. You must not use the forearm. Good call there by the officials. What do you think, Chase? Back live in action here? Yep. Some good defense there. I think around here, Bartman's going to be a problem at 6'10", as we're playing with more of a guard lineup, so certainly going to have to keep him in check down low. Wales with the basket on that one, making it 6-3 to three your score. I'm Dawson Swift here on the Grenadier Sports Network here in the season opener. If you're just joining us, 16 minutes left to play here in the first half. But they are from Kentucky. Close by school here, not too far away. Good pro season matchup for the Grenadiers here, not conference conference schools. We just love to be competitive. Both these teams are coming out with a lot of fire, a lot of energy, and they're ready to get after it for this new season. And a great crowd, too. I mean, pulling in here, having some stuff to finish up with my class, but pulling in the parking lot was jammed. About basketball and when these stands are full chase in the athletics building, it's just what you'd love to see. It means that people are willing to support these Grenadiers. They're excited to see these boys, you know, and see what they have to offer this season. A lot of potential. A lot of potential. I mean, it's untapped potential. A lot Definitely. of new faces. Definitely some good potential. And one of them, uh, a freshman, Lane Lauderbach, excuse me, who just checked in a bit ago for the first time, 6'6 six, six forward. And some good returning faces for the Grenadiers too. I mean, Glen Hill back and as, as well as Wales Jr., some good senior leadership. It looks like Stewart at 6'7", who's going to be a transfer for this roster. May have to take a look at where he transferred from here. Don't know off the top of my head. But certainly providing the Grenadiers with some size. They they do run with more of a small lineup. They like to press and get up and down the floor. That's just Wiley style. But certainly some size provided by him. Definitely like to play that small ball style. Not typically will you see the Grenadiers getting that 6'9", 6'10", 6'11", big and playing with that consistently. Most of the time they're playing with a 4-5 to five guard set. And... Pressing early and often, trying to play aggressive on defense and on offense, getting those transition points and trying to really gas out the other team, Chase. I was going to look at and see where Stewart was a transfer from, but there is no roster listed on the website, so that may not be possible. That will remain a mystery mark for <laughs> us today as Falcons will start the ball here. Rebounded there by Lauderball, the freshman that you were just talking about, Chase. And it looks like he's going to get a moving screen called on him there. And that's just freshman experience. That's yep. what that is, you know. That's Maybe just a learning curve. Some learning jitters, curve. too, I'm sure. First home game here, so. Playing against a big crowd. Mommy and Daddy's probably here. And you want to have a good yep. game. You want to have a big game. You know, show them what you're made of. But you just got to go out there and be yourself and play your brand of basketball. Look like a, a foul there, I believe drawn by Henry, number 11. Cut into the basket there and able to draw the foul, so he'll shoot two. These Grenadiers are head coached 
by the one and only, you guessed it, Wiley Brown, his 16th season here with the Grenadiers. Consistent leader for this Grenadier basketball team here in the past more than a decade. And he's got his assistant coaches both returning with him, Dewan Wheat and Fernando Mateo over there on the sideline, doing some great work helping out the players. The Grenadiers now trail here early on. They'll look to get back ahead here. Simmons pressing them as well. It's a lot of full court pressure and strong defense early on. You know, the Grenadiers need a lot out of Wells from the point position. Has a lot of experience. Plays well on both sides of the basketball. I'd like to see him take a bigger role on this team this year. Certainly going to be... The what you would think the main distributor for this offense. I mean, the ball's going to be in the hand, in his hands primarily coming up and down the floor. Such an athletic playmaker, Chase. he got to have the ball in his hands. Yeah, that basket is good by Javon Jackson. Such a smooth finish there, really, with the left hand, even the opposite hand. That ball is muffed and buffed as Jackson recovers, giving it back up to the freshman lotter ball. And a charge is called going in favor of Simmons College. And that's two quick fouls on Lauterbaugh, so we will likely see a substitution here, I would think. Two early ones on the freshman. You hate to see it, his first game out there, just getting that foul trouble, and to be honest, Chase, unnecessary foul trouble. Is he just that ball is stolen by Wells, great read, and that ball is blocked. Wow. Great play there defensively by number 14, Jaheim Foreman. I mean, you got to give credit to Wales for the, the steal and the push to get the layup, but you also got to, you know, tap your hat to Jaheim Foreman for the great block there. Really a nice chase down block. His chase down artist badge is of gold. Got to watch it, folks. That is something we now know. That wasn't in the rescouting report, but it is now. And you've already you've already seen a few steals for the Grenadiers. They're certainly not a larger lineup, so they're not really going to block too many shots, but they're going to get those steals left and right, pressing like they do. That's their main defensive strategy. And Javon Jackson gets another basket there. He can definitely fill it up. We've seen him last year, several 20-point games. He's going to get on the board. What about that, Chase? He scores the basket. Now he's playing some hard-nosed defense. Things starting to intensify here as the ball is deflected and it will stay with the possession of the Falcons. Some strong defense there by the Grenadiers. Had him trapped in the corner. Thought it'd be their ball there, but nonetheless, really good defense. That is the key to their defense, Chase. How many times can they trap the other team in the corner, trap the team at the top of the key and get the steal? How many times can they be effective in that defensive scheme? And we see head coach Wiley Brown Enter in Caleb Brown, his nephew there, the sixth player used by the Grenadiers, and or rather seventh. We'll see how deep the rotation is this year, but normally doesn't like to go into it too deep. Three off the mark there by Frederick. Sometimes I just get caught talking, Chase. <laughs> as well, that's the basket to go on the bank. Bank is open here early on. As Really can't let him get ahead of steam in transition there. No one stepped in front of him, and he finished at the rim. Just keeping track of this score, Chase. Is a bit of a challenge so far, but we're going to get better, folks. For you watching at home or listening in your car. Always tough to keep up on it on the, on the old Mount MacBook over there and enter everything in. Well, this game is so entertaining, folks. It's so... You know, it's an intense home opener here. You want to have your eyes glued to the court, but also keep track of the score and kind of have to learn how to multitask chase and be proficient at it nonetheless. As Javon Jackson gives it to Brown in the corner, and bang! And that's what Brown's really going to bring for this team. He can really spot up and shoot it, and that corner is definitely his favorite spot he on the floor. He is a dead-eye chase, an absolute laser beam from the corner. And a foul is called on the other side here. I believe that one will be 
That will be on Jacoby Hendricks, his first of the night. Hendricks, a junior guard out of Jefferson Town, Kentucky. As Falcons nail the first, giving them eight. Grenadiers, 15. Going two for two at the line. There on by Jonathan Henry. Javon Jackson taking the point here. Looking inside to Stewart, back out to Brown for another three, but Brown just off the mark, rebounded by Hill. That one is also no good. Grenadiers had some good looks at the basket, but nothing going there. Twelve minutes left to play here in the first half. Cross-court pass, and he nails it. Nice little assist and three-pointer there by the Falcons. Got the open look and executed as a stole. I said stole. steal here by number three, Hendricks. And a nice job by Jacoby there. He, you know, he didn't give up on the play. He missed the shot, but he got his own board and able to put it back and extend that Grenadier lead. Immediately got the steal and then immediately put the ball back up. Getting the easy two points, Chase, that's what we love to see. Anytime you can get the easy basket, you want to take advantage of that anytime you can. 17-12 your score. 11 minutes and 42 seconds left to play. I mean, so far, Chase, these Grenadiers seem to be fighting hard, running up and down the floor. They're playing with energy. And honestly, I'm pretty excited to see how they're going to do this year. Yeah, and I mean, it's something you'd expect from, from a roster that Wiley has. I mean, a team you know is going to be in good shape. They're, they're playing with a little bit more of a smaller unit, so they're definitely going to press you and they're going to get up in your face and, and try to make you turn it over and thus far it's been working out for them so I mean, anytime you play these Grenadiers Chase these players are going to be able to be able to tell what the other team ate for lunch earlier that day that's how that's how in, <laughs> in the grill we are or what kind of chewing gum they have yeah. maybe is that is that mint is that orbit's mint or is that extra you know polar ice you know and so far Wales leading the way for the Grenadiers with six he's also got a rebound, two of four from the field and two of two from the foul line. Way to keep up with them stats, Chase. I mean, someone's got to do it. <laughs> As we are back here out of the timeout, Falcons will have the ball here at about mid-court here. Grenadiers in that man-to-man -man defense. They're saying, hey, I think our guys one-on-one -on -one are better than your guys one-on-one. -on -one. That's exactly what that Sanchez. Yeah, that ball. Three-pointer is banged home. Making it 15 to 17. Henry inching them within two. Another three ball by Henry. I believe that's his second of the game. He is a shooter, folks. If you didn't know it before the game, you now know it nine minutes in. As that three is just short of the rim there by Hendricks. Henry with 10 leading Simmons College thus far, the, the Falcons. Seems to be their leading scorer as the big man takes a big three. No good. Long miss there, rebound, no good. Grenadiers with the rebound, Hill on the rebound. Hill looking on the drive, pull up mid-range jumper, and a foul is called. And that's something that Hill does a lot, and that's get to the foul on Chase. Almost like a James Harden type of player at times as he can get a lot of his points from that foul line. Just a smart veteran player. He knows how to draw that contact to get the foul and just really smart about just catching that contact and getting to the line. I mean, that's really the past couple of years been one of the things that he's really been skilled at and, and he's gotten a lot of points by doing so. 
veteran, veteran player there, James. A lot of experience there from number 11, Glenn Hill. Looking inside, and I was about to say this, Chase. That has to be a walk. And right as my brain was thinking that, the referee blows that whistle and makes a fantastic call down low. And, you know, as, as you see the foul there, uh, with the size that Simmons has compared to us down low, they really haven't gone inside a whole lot yet. I mean, they've hoisted up seven three-pointers to just four for us. So we'll see if that, if they continue to shy away from going in there or that strong grenadier defense is preventing them from doing so. That Maybe that fronting in the post and getting a hand there. Hill makes the first here. As Xavier Price, a freshman, will check into the contest. Wales taking a seat for a bit. Two for two at the line for Hill. He is an automatic bucket at that foul line there, Jason. Falcons trying to make a move here, down by six. Here with 10 minutes left, and a three ball for the Falcons. DeAndre Williams with that one. And they've been, they've been shooting the three, but they've been hitting it now, I mean. That, I believe that's their four three-pointer made on that shot there. Wales on the drive. No good. A lot of ball looking for the rebound, but nothing there. Falcons now with a little bit of momentum here, only down by three, looking to capitalize. <clears throat> looking inside, the big man taking it strong. And a foul is called, and rightfully so. He had three guys surrounding him, and... I believe he got hacked in just about every spot you can, Chase. And good defense there from Hadaway. He had his hands straight up. The only problem was that Price came in and tried to swipe the ball from him, and he reached in, and that was why the foul was called that's there. That's the only thing you can do is put your hands straight up, but if the guy is 6'10", there's not really much you can do, Chase. Yeah, Bartman... At 6'10", the center for the Falcons. He's a junior out of Tinley Park, Illinois. Something in basketball we can say, Chase, his size does matter down low. Definitely definitely matters. Rebounding certainly important. If LeBron James was 5'11", he would not be as good. And I <laughs> mark my word on that one. And another charge in favor of the Falcons. Wow, Chase, that is... Back-to-back -back calls against the Grenadiers here in the Ohm opener. That's a surprise. And and Stewart there, obviously his his first game is a transfer for the Grenadiers. Certainly looking to, you know, make some noise and make something happen. But had too much momentum going downhill there and picks up the offensive foul. And you want to be aggressive and you want to attack the basket, like John Wall or per se Russell Westbrook. But you also want to be controlled. You want to feel the body. You want to draw the contact and finish strong. He'll get that ball deflected, but back out in the corner. No good. Another rebound by the Grenadiers. Oh, they're fighting down low to get them offensive boards, Chase. You love to see it. Those second, third chance opportunities add up through the end of the game. Three ball by Wales. And bang! Wales. And we aren't kidding. He has a nice stroke from that area right there, Chase. Let me tell you, right out of the hand, it looked good all the way. Just did a nice job there getting his feet set and able to knock it down. And crowd loving it. A huge crowd. I mean, not really many spots to sit. The marching band's here. Yeah, you make a great point, Chase. If we were not doing this broadcast right now and we had these assigned spots, I don't know if I could find a seat yeah, in here. that packed. Some, I mean, of the, some of the most packed I've seen it, honestly, in the four years that I've been You're sitting thigh to thigh. It's thigh to thigh. I mean, there's <laughs> no space. If you need to go to the bathroom, you might as well do it now or in between, you know, in halftime or something. Because during the game, it's just it's too intense. And there's too many people, frankly. And Simmons, certainly, you know, a local college. Only 
about eight miles away, 19 minutes. So really? a lot of fans coming in to check out the players really? for Simmons that's, as well. That's a lot closer than I would assume there, Jay. Falcons having the ball here to start out of the timeout. Grenadiers with the trap. I thought it was a backcourt violation, but no call there. Pull-up jumper is nailed home by Jonathan Henry. Henry now at 12. Would I be wrong to say that Jonathan Henry looks like the best scorer on the floor right now, Jason? Certainly filling it up out there. And three ball, no good. Good look there by Price. Grenadiers sticking to that man-to-man -man defense. Inside of the big man. And a little bit of an O-lay there, but gets the call nonetheless. Eight minutes left to go here. 24-21, your score. Foul's pretty even to this point, eight to seven. A lot of whistles have been blown, though. I will say that they have been very whistle sensitive, and that's something that you see pretty commonly in the home openers across the board at all levels, high school, college, NBA. You know, the referees like to establish, okay, hey, I know the rules. Hey, I have a whistle, and I will blow it. And certainly a lot of excitement and jitters. Players going to play aggressive coming out of the gate here. Both teams, of course, their first game of the season. Coming in 0-0, fresh slate, new start. It's about winning, Chase. I mean, this... This is where champions are made, Jason. Today we want to get that 1-0 start to the season to get on the right foot. As we'll have a jump ball. It's center court there. Some trouble with it was Price had it and had a bit of a miscue there handling the ball and Simmons able to take advantage they'll have possession. Ball movement here by the Falcons as they look inside here to the big man, and they're going to call a push off, and rightfully so, Chase. I could see that with my own eyes up here. That that was definitely a push off. Grenadiers with that pesky defense down low. I mean, they're they're undersized down there, but they're certainly not out hearted. I mean, and anytime you create separation with that forearm, you got to blow the whistle. You just simply can't do that. If you're not Dwight Howard, you're not going to be able to do that. You may get away with it more if you're doing lower body and waist movements, but you can't You can't put an arm in and someone. A nice clean look to the basket there by Hendrickson. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Hendricks. Such an athletic playmaker on the floor. With him and Wells at the top of the key, we might be the most athletic in the conference, Chase. Wales and Hendricks combining for 13 thus far. And they combined 5 for 11 from the field. And that ball is stolen by the Grenadiers. Hill now pushing it up the floor. Hill looking out. Three ball. No good there by Carr. Armani Carr, a freshman guard. 6'4", 180 out of Louisville, Kentucky. Good hustle there by Lauderbaugh. Tried to get that offensive board, just not able to grab hold of it there. Goes out of play. would just like to point out something here, Chase. Majority of our roster is from the Louisville, Kentucky area. And if not from Louisville, Kentucky, it's about 15 to 20 minutes past Louisville, Kentucky. That being Jeffersonville, Sellersburg, Clarksville. All very close in the same area, Chase. And, uh, I mean, a lot of the same for Simmons, of course, is their local. There's a steal there. And, wow. Easy basket there by S for Simmons. A little around the world, but the Grenadiers quickly the other way with the two. That one courtesy of Armani Carr, his first two of the contest. That'll be 28. Grenadiers, Falcons 25, getting that score adjusted for you guys back at home watching. I mean, a lot of these guys, Chase, have probably played with each other, against each other, or even heard of each other just playing high school basketball. 
You would have to think so. So I mean, a lot of local talent on the roster for both sides. There is one international player. There's a player from Belgium for Simmons. Wow. As they move within one now with Brussels, the bucket. Belgium. Brussels, Belgium. I'm not, I, I couldn't tell you where that's at, Chase. I could not tell you. Yeah, it's been it's been a little while since I've done some geography. I, I'd be off on that one as well. Hill on the drive, almost getting the end one there as he will head to the line for another chance of two points here. And I told you folks early on in the half, this is what he likes to do. He likes to get himself to the foul line early and often. It's where he gets a lot of his points chased, and you can't blame him. It's efficient, and he knows he can make them. And he's definitely a good foul shooter. I mean, his value to this IUS roster isn't really, you can't really understate it as, I mean, Hill, a great defender, and with the undersized lineup, primarily probably going to play more of a center or power forward, even though he's undersized for the position because he, he can really guard a five. He can guard any spot on the floor, really, with his defensive abilities. During this timeout, Chase, I have been told to recognize the cheerleading team here tonight. A brand new look for this cheerleading team. Now, I will give you a guess. What is different about the team this year, Chase? I'll go with the uniforms. The uniforms. You are exactly correct, Chase. Last year they had the IU logo on them. I thought it was Indiana Bloomington. I couldn't tell a difference. <laughs> but this year they went with the darker red, southeast across the chest. A much cleaner look for these cheerleaders. And i got to say, I'm a big fan. And, and something you miss out on with, of course, volleyball wrapping up here soon. There's senior day on Saturday. Um, but... Now with basketball coming in, you of course got the marching band playing their music and the cheerleaders doing a nice job. It really, really adds to the atmosphere that you have here at the activities building. That's 100% right, Chase. The atmosphere is electric tonight. You love to be in it. First one is nailed home there by Hill. 29-27, your score. as the Grenadiers will go up by three here with five minutes and 50 seconds left to play. Hill, as you said, four for four from the foul line, so staying efficient there. I like to call that money ball, Chase, and it's not the one with Brad Pitt. <laughs> Falcons with some ball movement. Henry again bangs another three home. He is absolutely nasty out there. You gotta have a hand in his face. Oh He's a sniper. This is getting absurd. Henry is red hot from the three point arc here in the first half. Someone needs to slow him down or just contain him at the very least. As quickly again the other way. A familiar face, Glenn Hill drawing that foul again. As I, I can said. close my eyes, Chase, close my eyes, and you ask me who's at the foul line for the Grenadiers, I'm going to say Glenn Hill. Go. So far with that one, now 5 of 5 from the line. He's got 5 of a 7 from the charity stripe. And I was thinking he gets a little bit less than half his points from the line, but at this point in this game, it's more than 75%, Chase, and I'm no mathematician. The Grenadiers have not missed a foul shot thus far with that make from Hill. Now eight of eight. And Simmons shooting a really good clip at the line as well. Seven of eight for 87 and a half percent. Good here sticking to that. Looks like moving to a two three zone almost on that possession chase. As Glenn Hill getting an aggressive board over number 22, Evan Frederick, playing some aggressive basketball. He said, that's my ball. You don't get my ball, that's my ball. Got tangled up a bit there as well with Moore. So once again, you can close your eyes, Dawson. He's still there. All right, I'm closing my <laughs> eyes. I'm closing my eyes. Who's at the free throw line? It's Glenn Hill. I mean, we don't have to play around. We can just simply state the facts. And certainly... You would have to think this would play a factor for the Grenadiers later on. Hill drawing all these fouls is certainly going to get the Falcons in foul trouble as they've got 10 with five minutes left to go here in the first half. And the frustrations for the opposing team and head coach Tony Branch. It's almost boiling over there 
he has to be getting hot in that suit as he is not happy with the amount of fouls that have been called. And that ball is stolen by Jackson. No oh, good. A foul must have been called, but no whistle. Falcons moving in transition, trying to get the ball up the floor. And the Grenadiers pick up another steal. Hill pushing up the floor. Nice little carryover, and the basket is good. What a move, what a play, and what a playmaker. Number 11, Glenn Hill with the smooth as butter finish. And that's yet another steal for the Grenadiers, creating an opportunity. I believe that's their eighth now. Grenadiers looking like they're in a bit of a 2-3 zone here, and it seems to be working as the Falcons are having large amounts of trouble here on the offensive side. Back-to-back -back turnovers for the Falcons. They just can't seem to pull it together here late in the first half as they see that deficit grow ever larger. Wales. Off to Lauderball, the freshman. Lauderball trying to make a move in the corner to Hill. If he makes this, he, oh, almost. Good look in the corner by Hill. Falcons now pushing the other way. Yeah, and here's Henry. He's a sharpshooter. Got to have a hand in his face. Looking inside. A foul is called. Looks like it's going to be on Carr there. Trying to jockey for some positioning there in the post, but maybe a bit too aggressive as he gets the foul there. And that's not a bad foul. You can sit here and say, why are you doing that? But look at the size difference between number 25, who's at the line, that would be Phillip Richards Jr., and number 5 for our Grenadiers, Armani Carr. Armani Carr is 6 foot, no, 6'4", correction. And Richards is 6'9", so I mean, that's about a five to six inch difference. We don't know the true heights, but according to this paper, that is a large difference in heights, and Carr just has and is forced to play that physical defense. And on the board there, a miscue. Looked like Stewart was trying to secure it, but might have hit off of his shoe and rolled all the way over to the Grenadier bench out of play. Stewart, a new face for these Grenadiers. Adding some size and some physicality down low. Something they definitely need from last year's team. Thirty-five, thirty-one. your score. Grenadiers leading by four. As the Falcons will be bailed out here on the foul. Sending number 12, DeAndre Williams to the line. It's going to be a foul on Javon. I believe that's only his first there. But three seconds left on the shot clock. Just got to try to keep your hands up. And may, might have been the case there for Jackson, but nonetheless, the official making the foul call. Going into this second half, Chase, with only three minutes left to play in the first, you got to know that the whistle is going to be sensitive. And you got to play smart basketball. As that is 0 for 2 at the line there for Williams as Glenn Hill pulls the rebound down. Now Wells setting up the offense. Wells gets it ripped away by Frederick. And it will be another foul on the Grenadiers. I believe that one on Jackson. Sending number 23, James Moore, to the line on that one. Three minutes left to play here. I believe, though, I think they called that one on Wales. He's trying to get back there and uh, prevent that bucket, of course, and he'll get that foul. And the, the big difference thus far in this one has been points off of turnovers. I mean, like we said, the Grenadiers are going to press. They're going to get those steals and turn you over. They're going to be activated on both sides of the basketball. And they've got 15 points off of turnovers to just zero for Simmons as they've yet to score off of a Grenadier turnover. And keep that stat in mind, Chase. That will be a big play factor in this game. Moving on to see who can pull out the dub here in the home opener. Wow. 
looking to make something happen as Hendricks is fouled. They're calling the push off, maybe a bit of a push on the hip there. Any type of contact that we see, usually that whistle is blown. As Hendricks looking to take advantage of the foul line here. As he will make the first 36-31 year score. Jacoby at the line for the first time here in this one. Five points now looking for six here with the second make. One for two at the line for Hendricks as the Falcons will recover. Looking to set up some half-court tempo offense here. Don't want to force any shots. Double team down low on Fredericks. Bounced out for a three. And that ball is good. DeAndre Williams with a three-point basket. And a great shot there. A couple steps behind the line. Just set his feet. Brings him within two. And almost a push-off call there on Hill, but no call as it will be Falcons basketball. And that's going to be the second there on Stewart trying to get in and grab that board and maybe generate a jump ball. But instead it will send one of the Falcons to the line here. I believe it will be Richards Jr., the sophomore. He has two thus far and he's one of two from the line. And they'll move to two or three with the make. We also have some audio improvements for you fans back at home watching. Not sure what it's called, but Stephen has informed me that the audio system is much improved. So we got that external microphone going now so you can capture a little bit more of the crowd the atmosphere that's going on here in New Albany. For those listening at home or those not able to make it tonight. Pull up jumper, no good there by Hendricks, but he will go to the line for two. A late whistle on that one. But nonetheless, we're gonna take that. Any chance we can have points at the line chase, we wanna take advantage of the opportunity to score two points. Hendricks cashing in on the first. And off of what I said earlier, the points off of turnovers, Simmons with 12 turnovers to compared to just two for IU West. So they're doing a much better job taking care of the Orange here tonight. And that's at all levels of basketball, Chase. Taking care of the basketball is one of the most important keys to the game. And that was definitely a backcourt there as... Spin move by Henry. And Henry is playing some good basketball here tonight, folks. Scoring left and right here for the Falcons. 38, 38 year score. Minutes and 30 seconds left to play. Swinadiers applying some bit of a pressure here at the top of the key. Brown guarding Henry. Grenadiers looking to step up the defense here and keep things tied as we're creeping a little over a minute. Going back to that man to man. Ball is stolen by Wells and recovered by Carr. As Wells will take the point here. Grenadiers trying to take the lead back as Hendricks with the three. And bang! Hendricks getting the crowd fired up here. As we'll see the strategy here for Simmons. Shot clock allowing a couple more possessions if you wind it all the way down. Henry with a response, three of his own, but no good. One of his first misses here tonight. He's been red hot like some hot sauce, folks. We're going to have a foul there. And what you got to love is seeing these freshmen get into the game, get activated, and make their impact early on in the first half. As you see, Carr making that big shot. Hendricks making some big plays, getting to the foul line, playing some aggressive defense, getting some deflections on some balls and... That's really what you love to see from a freshman is going there and laying your heart out on the line. And a, and a deeper rotation than you normally see for head coach Wiley Brown. He's used 10 players to this point 
typically sticking with like a seven or eight player rotation last year. But like you said, Dawson, the freshman getting some experience. Carr's been in, Price, Lauterbaugh. We've, I believe we've seen a little bit of Hathaway as well. And the more players you can get involved, would that be better for the Grenadiers long term? Would that save our legs long term? You know, getting more people involved that can score the basketball, it makes us, I think it makes us more of a threat. You don't know who's going to score 20 at any given night. You don't know. And and certainly something good for the Grenadiers, the head coach Brown probably checking out a few players, seeing what they look like in the rotation and really figuring out those rotations. Ten seconds left to play in the first half. A three is jacked up and no good there by the Falcons. As there will be... Seven seconds left to play, 42-38, your score. And Simmons is going to have to get some up quick. You're only two seconds two left seconds in the shot clock. We'll see if they clock. oop, try to oop something. And not a lot of awareness there by the big man. Is that be a shot clock violation? Giving the Grenadiers four seconds. To and get uh, for Bartman there, really got to pay attention to the game. I mean, two seconds on the shot clock, he wasn't even aware that he needed to shoot the basketball, and he was wide open. Got to be heads up. level deduction right there. Probably about a minus 10 on that one. Kind of looked like J.R. Smith out there in the finals. Didn't know how much time was on the clock. I need that LeBron meme, you know, where he's like, what's going on? What are you thinking, kid? Hill makes an aggressive take to the basket. And he will get the foul, I believe. And just some unreal stuff from Glenn here in the first half. He's gone to the line 10 times going for 11 and 12 here and 9 of his 13 have been from the foul line. I mean, he's been living and dying What is there. new for Glenn Hill? Making things happen any way that he can, whether that be defensively, offensively, or simply just taking the ball aggressively to that basket and getting to the line to help his team. He does it all, Chase. He really does. Certainly the player you'd circle as the leader or, or captain for this group, I would have to say. As that will conclude the first half here in New Albany, folks. Your score, 44 to 38. Stay tuned here on the Grenadier Sports Network for second half action.
and we are back here live in action here in New Albany, folks. Back here in the Athletics Building for second half action between the IUS Grenadiers and the Simmons College of Kentucky Falcons. 44 to 38, your score. And some quick scoring for your Grenadiers. Glenn Hill led the way for the Grenadiers. 15 points, 11 to 12 from the line. Wales with nine. Jacoby Hendricks had nine as well. Four for Javon Jackson, three for Caleb Brown, and two for Armani Carr. Grenadiers will have the possession here to start the second half. Lud looking to continue their first half efforts as they lead by six. Wales for three, and bang! Wales getting a hot start here in the second half. Boy, oh boy, when Wales starts making those threes and driving to the basket, that is a dual threat, Chase. Certainly it makes the defense have to open up and guard him in different ways, creating looks for others. And Hendricks running down the court looking for a fast break opportunity, and he is fouled by Jonathan Henry. And that's something we, we would look for with the Grenadiers, with Wales making the three there to get going more in the second half, four of 12 for 33% now with that make from the three-point line, looking to get those numbers up a bit and get some more looks from the perimeter. And if this Simmons College Falcons team wants to crawl back in this one, I think they're going to have to continue to hit Jonathan Henry and continue letting him score the basketball. As in that first half chase, he seemed to be the best and really only score the Falcons had to answer for against this Grenadiers defense. Certainly good numbers for him. He's leading all scorers currently with 17, and he was 3 of 4 from the three-point line. I mean, what is this, 2K? 17 <laughs> points in the first half. I mean, that is pretty impressive start here for the season for Henry. As that ball is inside, looking to make a big play, and that basket's good by Cameron Bartman, 6'10 center. Having a good look inside there, even though he was surrounded by white jerseys. And, and had to get it up quick there. Certainly was close to a three-second call in the lane. Was camped out there a while. Wales on the drive. No good. As that ball is deflected out of bounds by Stewart. And it will be Falcons basketball. Love to see these fans taking advantage of that concession stand, Chase. I see quite a few people taking advantage of that hot dog and that tin foil wrap, and it's hot and ready, just like a Little Caesars pizza, folks. And <laughs> Gotta get the nacho cheese on the side. Top five hot dog in the conference, Chase. As that is missed there by Henry. Wales with the rebound, passing it up to Jackson. That ball is stolen and recovered by the Falcons. 49 to 40, your score. Grenadiers leading by nine. Thrown in down low to the big man, Bartman. And Bartman gets that one to fall. Back-to-back -back baskets by Bartman. Do you think this is a point of emphasis moving into the second half? Having Bartman a more influential part of this offense. I, I would certainly think so as the Grenadiers dealing with a bit of foul trouble. Wales for three missing there. Rebound by Stewart. A nice little power dribble. Establishing that authority down low. And he will get the much well-deserved two points. Or two foul shots at the line here, Chase. And first opportunity at the line here for Stewart. The transfer from Spalding as we were informed at halftime by Logan Stevens as we have that info now, without, even without the roster not being on the website there. And this Christian Stewart is no Stewart Little. I mean, he is a big man coming in. A senior forward, 6'7", 240 pounds. An absolute specimen down low for the Grenadiers. Certainly someone they're going to lean on in the post, being a bit undersized as well. Falcons. Now with the ball. As we mentioned, Stewart, of course, leaning on in the post. He is guarding the big man, Bartman, for Simmons. That basket is good by the Falcons. 
nice little mid-range pull up there. Kind of expanding the arsenal per se. They don't just shoot the three chase, they also look for that mid-range jumper. Glenn Hill for three, and bang! Glenn Hill. And Hendricks had tied him for a moment at 15, leading the scoring for the Grenadiers, but Hill with the three now at 18 in the contest. And a drive by Withrow there, the freshman guard. Strong finish. Hill, Hill again. Back to back and bang! Bingo. The same spot. You gotta guard him. Oh boy, folks. Good God. Hill is on fire here. Back to back threes. Someone get the water hose out as he's on fire right now. 21 points already. And we've got 16 and a half minutes left to play here. The Falcons might be in trouble, Chase. Boy, oh boy, Hill's throwing out grenades left and right from that three-point arc. It seems to appear, appears to be frustrating Moore as he shoves him a bit there, heading back down the floor. Missed there by Moore. Grenadiers pushing it the other way inside to Stewart. Stewart from the elbow. Just off the rim there. Now the Falcons pushing the other way. Facing that Grenadiers strong and stout defense as a block is called, a late block call at that on Stewart on the drive there by Withrow. That call was very, very late. I mean, you'd, you'd expect the call to be made by the official under the bucket there, but not by the, the one coach. on our sideline making the call, not Seems sure what went down. That the fans were not also approved of that call as the moans and groans from the crowd all at the same time as Hill pushes it up the floor to Hill to Wales, yeah, that basket is good. And let him beautifully, I mean, a great feed there right ahead of him, he's just had to lay it up and in. Hill to Wales is what I was trying to say on that, Chase. Dynamic duo at that. And that Grenadier defense at it once again. I mean, certainly best described as pesky. I mean, they just get those steals, and there's another one for Hendricks. I mean, honestly, sometimes they're almost moving too fast, going back and forth. I have the ball, you have the ball, <laughs> I have a steal, here's a basket in transition. You got to have to keep up with them, Chase. I mean, these boys are playing some fast paced basketball. Grenadiers with 11 steals now. I, I want to know the school record, just in case. <laughs> I mean, just in case they hit that 22 mark, 21 mark, you never know. With the, with the system that Wiley has implemented here, you certainly wouldn't be surprised if it's a pretty high number. And that's right, Wiley, he has a wild system here. Plays aggressive. He knows the personnel that he has, and he plays that fits best to that personnel. So he knows how to use the system he has in place, like you said. Knows the personnel. Been doing it for a long time, 16 years for the Grenadiers. A little rhyme for you there. Hill on the drive, and he will get pushed by number 12, DeAndre Williams. That will be his third foul of the night. And this is not NBA chase. They get five total, so you might want to be careful there, Williams. Having three fouls with 15 minutes left to play, that's a lot of basketball, and... As Lauterball gets the ball inside on the inbounds and nails it home. Lauterball, that freshman player, making a big impact here for the Grenadiers. And just a perfectly executed out-of-bounds play there. A great cut, able to finish at the rim. The cut, the execution, the finish at the rim. It is absolutely electric here in the Athletics Building. On the drive, and an and one will be called as a hush goes over the crowd as the momentum slightly shifts back to the Falcons. As Moore with a strong finish there, an athletic finish, drawing the foul and able to finish through the contact. What more can you ask of Moore on that <laughs> drive, taking that so strong? I mean, he has no other option other than get that basket or get that ball in the basket be able to finish the shot there Simmons moving within 12 and that's something they're gonna have to do a lot here in the second half to crawl back in is they're trailing by a decent deficit double digits here and they're looking to slow down the clock and stop the clock 
Rather. When you have your foot on that gas pedal, Chase, you've got to keep it down to the floor. We are not letting up as this game is not over. As Hendricks makes a good spin move to the basket and gets that one to fall. Love to see that take by the junior Hendricks out of Jefferson Town, Kentucky. Henry on the mid-range jumper, no good. Bit of a cold start here for the leading scorer. Scramble on the floor there is going to lead to a jump ball. And I think we should do it the old school way. If there's a jump ball, I think they should actually literally jump for it where the ball was. Just like they do in the NBA. I think that is something, a rule, that could be altered here in the future to improve college basketball. It makes it a little bit more fair. I mean, even if it's a guard and a center, I mean, that's just part of the game. Would bring a fun dynamic, really, to that aspect of the game, definitely. Who wants it more? That's kind of what it promotes. As Wells with the miss there, a lot of ball. Trying to grab it, just couldn't seem to. A little bit of a slippery hand on that one. As the Falcons jacking up a three, and that ball is drilled home by James Moore. James Moore's mom's fan is in attendance, or James Moore's mom is in attendance here. Got she the fat head. Fat head, yeah. That's that's gotta love the support from the family <laughs> members. I mean, she's into it. She's been on her feet practically the whole game. I mean, the the, the level of dedication there with the fat head. That's that's a mom that's been there for every game, practice, everything in between there. I guarantee, I guarantee she's been at every game, Chase. Just got to love to see you know, the mothers being the loving caregivers they are. Such angels to have in your life, Chase. Undying love. And that's just kind of what we have here for the Grenadiers. That undying passion and undying love to support these Grenadiers year in and year out. They are trying to make a title run here in the conference this year talking to Wiley Brown before the game he has high expectations for this team rebound there for Lauderbaugh and stay strong with it able to draw the foul there and exactly what you need to do on the board just be strong with it 100% Chase when you grab that basketball it's your basketball you almost got to have super glue on your hands so nobody can get that ball. Motterbaugh at the line for the first time here. Two points thus far, three boards coming off the bench. Don't ask me to spell his last name, folks. As even as I'm looking at the paper, I still couldn't tell you how to spell that last name. As Lauderball will make both of his opportunities at the line, making it 65 to 54. Your score, 13 minutes and 10 seconds left to play here in the second half. In a, in a different lineup for the Grenadiers here with a little bit of a lead. They're resting Glenn Hill. As going with a bit of a younger lineup. Hendricks is out there as well as Jackson, Let's and then see you've what got these young Carr. prospects have, Chase. Let's see what they have in the tank. Do they have the diesel? Do they have the electric motor? We want to know what they have inside. What's deep down in between that rib cage? As that ball is off the mark, three-pointer missed there by DeAndre Williams. Grenadiers now pushing it up off to Javon Jackson, and he is fouled. They move so fast. Once they get that ball, they, they push the ball up and down the floor, Chase. They play with that fire. They play with that fifth gear right behind them. Love to see it. Some entertaining basketball, to say the least. And Jackson at the line for the first time as well here. The Grenadiers continue to get to the foul line, taking advantage of that aggression by the Falcons. He will drill both of his opportunities at the line. That is something I also want to point out, Chase. The Grenadiers have been very efficient at that foul line. They are doing their job 
They must have pra been practicing that a lot these past few weeks. I mean, a heck of a game at the line. 23 of 26 for 88%. Can't ask for much better. Conference average is around that 69 to 71%, Chase. So definitely above average in that category. As Jackson able to finish acrobatically at the rim there for two more. Henry on the drive, and a charge is called. About time the Grenadiers get one to go their way. That will be their first charge card of the game. And excellent job there by Jacoby getting his feet set in a good position to take the hit, and he'll get that charge. Good defense. And that's laying your body on the line. It's saying, I care more about winning this basketball game and I care more about my team than I do about my body. And that says a lot about this Grenadier basketball team early on here in this home opener. We're seeing a lot of positive green flags amongst these young kids. Some of them actually men, believe it or not. <laughs> Hill, senior veteran leader on this team. Nothing about that man is a young kid. And we're going to have a player fouling out already here. It's number 12, DeAndre Williams, is already going to be fouled out of the game here with 12 minutes left to go. I so, want to hear that buzzer, Chase. Is so, it five? Is it five buzzers? B, 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 B? I mean, I want to hear it. It fires me up. Certainly not something you want to see if you're Simmons. Is Williams a great shooter for him. He's hit a couple threes, and now he's going to have to sit down, and he'll be out for the rest of the contest. Believe it or not, Chase, that is something I heard a lot of when in my playing days of basketball. That, that buzzer noise was almost my best friend at times. <laughs> Anytime I hit that third, fourth quarter, it just seemed that my fifth foul was right around the corner. Too aggressive out there. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know. There always needs to be that one guy on the team that's willing to be aggressive and willing to be the anchor on both sides of the floor. Now the Falcons pushing it up here. Grenadiers remaining in that looks like a 3-2 zone. Falcons able to penetrate down low. Yeah, get that basket to fall and a bit of a sky hook look. 70 to 58 your score. And looks like we'll have a stoppage of play here. We'll have timeout. a timeout. So you owe me a Coke, Chase. You owe me a Coke. <laughs> Timeout is killed. And we'll take a short break here, but first we want to remind you to make sure to go over to IUS Sports Talk on Twitter and give us a follow as we have some updates throughout the contest and we have the scoring lines as well. So we'll take a short moment here on the Grenadier Sports Network and be back with more Grenadier basketball. are back here live in action here in New Albany folks at the Athletics Building. Grenadiers looking to continue pushing that lead 70 to 58 your score. 11 minutes and 45 seconds left to play. Stewart inside. Nice little move. Oh and a bit of a bounce bounce booty bop and that ball is out of the rim. Nice look there by Stewart. Couldn't get the basket to fall. Number four, Cameron Maddox entering the game for the Falcons. That ball is in and out. Rebounded there by Stewart. Hendricks taking the point here at the top of the key, facing that Falcons man-to-man -man defense. 
Inside to Stewart. Bump here, bump there. A nice little move. And can't get it to fall. Stewart's had back-to-back -back good looks. The basket just can't mm. seem to finish. Mm -mm. Uh, three ball by Henry. And he nails it home. Henry is back in action. As he was a bit cold to start the first ten minutes of this second half. But getting on the board there. Leading scorer for the Falcons. They need him to start producing if they're going to come back in this game. Some frustration there from head coach Wiley Brown. He's going to call a timeout here. And just a tough couple of plays there for Stewart. I mean, able to clear the space, use his strength, but just couldn't finish a couple that, baskets close there. A couple great opportunities. You'd love to see Stewart use his size and use that body to establish position down low to get the open look, even with two guys on him. He's not lowering his shoulder. He's using his body. He's using them legs, but just can't seem to finish, Chase. And you really hate to see that as he's not getting rewarded for that hard-earned move down low. And something, if he can get those to fall, Chase, he can be a big factor down low as we've seen some signs here and there of some nice playmaking ability. And the Grenadiers can certainly use you that know. post presence. He's looking to make a big Im impact on this team. A transfer coming over. Not sure from where. From Spalding. <laughs> oh, from Spalding. From Spalding. Okay. We got that now. Okay, so fans back at home, we do know that he is from Spalding University. Senior four making an impact on this Grenadiers team. As Hendricks gets that basket to fall with the one-hander right over the head there of the defender. And that's not an easy shot, but he makes it look easy and smooth there. Easy paisy lemon squeezy, they always say. As an air ball there by number three, Withrow. Trying Not to get sure fancy it there. Tipped. It might have been tipped, I don't know. But it was indeed an air ball. Trying to do a little iso ball and it didn't work out for him. Hill with a nice strong rebound, but can't get it to go. And here's Carr. Carr again. Carr again. And... <laughs> Gets the basket to fall. Like a broken record there, but Carr. And let me tell you, Carr, he is getting his own rebound. What was that, three times in a row? Carr again, Carr again. I mean, whew. On the glass there like a window washer. Had me on my tippy toes there for a second. But as long as he got the basket to fall, not sure if they're counting it or not. As Wales will be at the line here. As you know what the call is on that, Chase? Looked like it might. Someone might have got teed up there. I could be wrong, but looks like uh, looking at down at the court, it looks like Henry possibly because he's in an argument with the referee. Could be wrong, but now we're doing our best here, fans, to know what's going on on the inside scoop on the court. But sometimes we just can't seem to follow through. As we, I'm not sure it actually would happen, Chase. And now we're going to have a timeout for Simmons as the Grenadiers lead by 14 with a little under 10 minutes left to go here in the second half. We'll step away for a moment here on the Grenadier Sports Network. We are back here live in action, folks, here in New Albany, home of the Grenadiers, where champions are made as the Falcons will have the ball here after the timeout. And we believe the technical foul against the Falcons. Wells making both chances at the line there. That ball is missed inside. 
by number 23, James Moore. Grenadiers now pushing the other way. Wales taking the point. Trying to look for Brown in that sweet spot corner. Turnover there by the Grenadiers. Henry looking for a quick three. No good. Lotter ball with the rebound. Freshman getting them boards, making his impact known. Wells looking at Hill. Hill with the pump fake on the drive. And he gets it. And he really sold that oh. fake there. Whatever he was selling, they bought. Oh. Completely sold out for that fake and cleared himself up for uh, some penetration to the rim there. It almost got me jumping a little bit, honestly. I thought he was going to shoot it. Very solid use of the pump fake there. That's some old school basketball. I mean, that's some that's some Larry Bird type basketball. We're trying to pump fake, jump to the rim. I mean, this is this is some fundamentals. Style play. I mean, this is fundamentals. And if you're just joining us, the Grenadiers with a 16 point advantage now with 8:46 left to go, as they've doubled their advantage at the half now, taking more of a commanding lead here in the second half. Nothing less than impressed from Glenn Hill this afternoon. 77-63, your score. Basket good on that last play by Philip Richards, Jr. for the Falcons. The kid from Griffin, Georgia. Hill inside, looking at Carr. Cross-court pass, and no good. Rebounded by Hill to Wells. Back to Hill in the corner. No good. Ladder ball on the follow-up. Got to box him out. Big Got body to. down low there. Got to. He is a prospect with many talents and getting that follow-up is one of them. Falcons with the rebound here. Seven minutes and 50 seconds left to play. 79-63 your score. And a foul down low. That one will be on Glenn Hill. Henry at the line now looking to add to his total. He's got 22. He's 7 of 14 from the field and 4 of 7 from 3. He's also 4 of 4 from the foul line. A lot of production. Henry at the line here. Looking for a couple of makes. It would put him at the leading score of the contest altogether, making pass up Glenn Hill, who has 23. He was a big contributor in that first half, Chase, but in the second half, the Grenadiers have found a way to slow down Henry on the offensive side. He made about four threes in that first half. In this second half, I believe he only has one. As Wales will take the ball up here for the Grenadiers. Grenadiers looking to maybe slow things up here a bit. And, and Hendricks. An impressive the finish. Call on the fadeaway to the side. You can't touch me. I'm John Cena. You also can't see me. He will be at the line to complete the three-point play. Just a strong finish, able to extend all the way. Just say, Henry, you're too small there. I'm going to shoot it right over you. S-T-U-D, stud. If you don't know it now, now you do. Ooh, tough break there, though. Like there was a lid on the rim, went halfway down and right back out. Falcons looking to push through this deficit. As a foul will be called, sending more to the line for two shots. Moore, the senior guard out of Dunbar, West Virginia. Out in Mountaineer country. Have you ever been to West Virginia, Jay? Passing through on the way on vacation. I've passed through a time or two, but actually never strength. stayed. Never stayed, man. Yep. A lot of mountainous terrain, that's for sure. Called West Virginia, but it's in the east. Doesn't make a lot of sense, Jim. <laughs> it's on the east coast. Yeah. 
Now, North and South Carolina, that makes sense. You know, North, South, that makes sense. But West Virginia, uh, I'm not quite on that train just yet, Jay. As Brown missing from three in the corner, rebounded by Richards Jr. And Falcons pushing the ball up the floor. Basket good there by Moore. They're crawling back here slowly but surely. They're not giving up. And Brown wants to talk things over here, so he's going to call a timeout and speak with his Grenadiers here a minute as they lead by 12. 6.42 left to go here in the contest. Grenadiers on opening night. Step away for a moment here on the Grenadier Sports Network. And we are back here live in action here in New Albany, folks. Home of the Grenadiers. Hashtag go get Grenadiers. Hill inside. And the fadeaway, making it look clean. Wow. The go-to there. He can definitely hit shots from the mid-range. Nice. Just crispy look. Clean and crispy. I mean, you love to see it. Very impressed with the offensive capabilities from Hill. Seeing some improvement from last year, just the efficiency part of the game. And he's a gym rat. He's always in the gym working on his craft, getting shots up. Oh. And oh, he's trying to bring the house down. Wow. Wow. God. <laughs> that got the fans on their feet there. I mean, that almost got me on my feet. I was about to go crazy up in here. I thought a couple of people were going to try to jump through the ceiling. Yeah. Wow. I wanted and to say this, to jump through the ceiling too. <laughs> we almost had posters being made and shipped out to the entirety of New Albany on that one. Wow, Hill Ooh. trying to make an impression, trying to make a statement. A ferocious one at that. <laughs> trying to break up the Statue of Liberty there. Did not expect that one either. I just figured he'd go up for oh. like a jelly finish, but... No, he was he going wanted for the all. jelly and the jam. He wanted the jelly and the jam, Chase. All that in a bag of chips there. And there's a lot of air in bags of chips, too. <laughs> and he caught a lot of air, man. He, he was flying like Jordan out there. Corner three from the Falcons is nailed home. Didn't look good for a while, but somehow finds the hole. Grenadiers respond fast there with the first points of the game for Xavier Price, the freshman guard. Strong finish there with the opposite hand. Good look. First two points for the freshman. 87 to 72, your score. 74 correction. Here with five minutes left to play in this one, folks. It's staying jam-packed and staying intense. Stay tuned. Grenadiers looking to cap off this season opener on the W side of things. Certainly setting a pace to go over the century mark as well. And this one just 13 points away from doing so. And five over five minutes left. Next game will be Saturday, October 29th against Campbellsville Harrodsburg and that will be at 5 o'clock p.m. and that will be an away game Chase so that will not be in the athletics building that will be an away game for the Grenadiers and the Grenadiers are going to be on the road for a little while as after this one against Simmons they're going to have four straight matchups on the road at Campbellsville Harrodsburg Hanover Miami Middletown and Georgetown and then 
in November on the 15th. They'll be back here at the Activities Building against Brescia at 7.30. And that game is starred, Chase. That game is starred. It has an Atrix right by Brescia. That is a key game for us coming back, hoping to have a strong start to this season. Maybe we're undefeated going into that game against Brescia. Brescia, a tough opponent, and this conference always gives us trouble. So we will see you guys Tuesday, November 15th, next time on the Grenadier Sports Network. And, and we forgot to mention as well, that'll be the first conference matchup for the Grenadiers opening conference play against Brescia. So Those we'll be back Bearcats. for a good one. And Bearcats are mean and they're blue. They're not green, they're blue. They're not mean <laughs> and green, they're mean and blue. You know. So we want to keep that game starred and hope the Grenadiers can finish tonight off. Five minutes left to go in this one. Grenadiers in the driver's seat up by 14. Wales at the line, always a good sight for the Grenadiers, but a tough yes, break there. In that one, Chase. Man, that was so close to the cookie jar, but couldn't fall in. And yes, Chase, I did just refer to the rim <laughs> as a cookie jar. Falcons looking to get some offense going here. Jacking up a shot from the corner. That will be a two. No good. Rebounded by Hill. Lotter ball. Lotter ball. Can't seem to find the ball. Had a bit of a struggle there. A bit of a fight against Moore. Diving on the floor. Heck of an effort nonetheless. Three ball. Bang tone there by number three, Gavin Winthrow. Actually, there's no in in that. That'd be Withrow. Good looking shot from him there. Off the catch and shoot. Catch and shoot specialist, they call him. His name is circled on the roster as a potential sharpshooter. As Hill bangs one home. That three ball is absolutely drilled from deep in the corner. Hill showing everybody here that he is also a deadly shooter. After the wow. Radcliffe responding fast with a three ball of his own. And Hendricks on the other end taking some contact. Probably a foul there, but still finishes. And Hill with 30 points now after that three earlier. So he might head over to McDonald's and get himself three 10 pieces for that 30 piece McNugget. Oh, we love to hear it, Chase. Maybe he's trying to get the 50 nug from Wendy's. We don't know. Still three minutes left to go as Hill trying to go back up with it, but the ball is blocked and will be going the other way for the Falcons. 93 to 80, your score here. Grenadiers looking to finish off here with this 13 point lead. Sticking to that man to man defense as a foul is called and a three point play opportunity here for the Falcons. And Withrow once again. Able to get it done there. He's got nine now looking for ten at the line. And someone who stepped up for the Falcons here. I mean, with the with Williams fouling out, they needed a guard to step up coming off the bench, and he's done just that. Has done just that, Chase. He has really stepped up in the second half to provide those essential points for the Falcons as they trail here by 11. Looking to bounce back here. Grenadiers playing some strong basketball, some strong defense. Really excited to see this team perform throughout the year. And we'll run through some stats real quick while we have a break. We mentioned Glenn has 30 points, but he's also got 10 rebounds. So a double-double for Glenn here tonight in the season opener. Jacoby Hendricks had, has 21 currently, three rebounds and an assist. Wow. Wales 16, four and three. I mean, I told you, fans, I told you before the game, Glenn Hill is a key factor to the success of this Grenadiers team. And when he comes out here and provides a double-double production line, gives you 30 points, what more can you ask out of the senior veteran who is out here just absolutely playing his heart out? And there's nothing being left on that court here tonight, Chase. And I'm, that's really the thing that you'd expect with the veteran presence on this Grenadier roster. I mean, Hill, Hendricks, and Wales all in double digits, and they've really been scoring the ball well. Exactly what you need to see. You need to see those veterans take charge, especially starting the campaign here tonight. Jackson not far behind as well with nine, nearly in the double digits in terms of scoring.
Grenadiers looking to score 100 points on the home opener. That's surely exciting for the fans watching at home and the fans watching here in the athletics building. Anytime your offense scores 100 points, Chase, it is a good night of basketball. And some good defense there for Simmons as they will get the violation there and the basketball. Doing a really nice job of getting their hands in the passing lanes. The Grenadiers could not get the ball in. And a charge is called. What a play there. As Carr wow. getting his feet set once again, he'll draw the second charge of the contest for the Grenadiers. Just a great defensive play. Carr making his impact on the defensive side of the ball. Maybe that's why he's in the game. You know, he's made a few big shots, made a three earlier in the game. But on the defensive side of the ball, I see his athleticism being used the most. And he's such a strong defender, able to move his feet so quick left and right. Going to be a very useful tool on this defensive side for the Grenadiers. Car for three. And on the other end. Just as I'm talking about him, Chase, he said, I can shoot, I can shoot, I got this. Let me show you what else I can do. Both sides of the floor drawing the charge and then coming down and knocking down the trifecta. Three ball. No good there by Withrow. They got it by Wales. Grenadiers with a strong lead with about two and a half. That 13-point advantage. Slowing things down here, trying to run a bit of a half-tempo offense as Wales from the top of the key for three. No good. God, I wanted that one, folks. It looked good all the way. Wales, such a smooth stroke from deep. Gotta love it, having the confidence to shoot the ball at will. And, and well, even over and back will be called, but not for the right team. That will send number 21, Cameron Bartman, to the uh, mm, excuse me, a little bit of a hiccup there, to the line for two. As Bartman is spelled with two ends, Jace. Two, not just one, two. And Caleb Brown will check in for Glenn Hill. Glenn's night is done. 30 points on 13 of 14 from the line and 10 rebounds. I mean, that's absolutely phenomenal, Chase. Home opener. That fires me up. Just love to see this Grenadiers team coming out first night in front of a very excited, highly anticipated crowd. And they did exactly what they were supposed to do. They got the job done. They performed on both sides of the basketball. And they executed very efficiently. Of course, as we mentioned, one of those key factors, the ability to turn Simmons over. They turned him over 15 times and scored 28 points off of their turnovers. Falcons trying to make a play in transition, but can't hang on, as it will be Grenadier basketball. A minute and 44 seconds left to play. 96 to 84, your score. Grenadier's looking to close this one out. There will be no women's game following the conclusion of this game. This is the only game here tonight, folks. So stay strapped into your seat belts as Carr misses that one. The foul will be called. Sending the Falcons to the line. Sending number, I believe, number four. Number four, Cameron Maddox. No good on the first one by Maddox. Falcons 19 at 27 from the line for 70%. Makes the second. Wales establishing that point position. Falcons trying to establish some pressure uh, at the top of the key. Trying the double team. 
And that's going to be the tough thing for the Falcons. The Grenadiers have great ball handling with both Wales Brown in the and corner. Hendricks. No good. Rebounded by Hendricks. And Hendricks nails that one home on the offensive rebound. Under a minute left to play here. This is going to be a strong victory for the Grenadiers to get their season started. Exactly what you wanted to see. Inside to the big man, Bartman. And Bartman will not get that one to fall. Grenadiers with the rebound. 45 seconds left to play. 25 seconds on the shot clock. 98-85, your score. And about an 18-second difference between shot and game clocks. The Grenadiers are going to walk away victorious and start their season 1-0. And a huge factor of it. Oh, this is a big win for the Grenadiers. 1-0 on the season. Like you said, Chase, next game for the Grenadiers. And bang! Carr said, I'm not done. He said, I'm not finished. I'm going to make one more for the fans at home, giving the Grenadiers 101 points on the night. As the Falcons will miss that three, and likely the Grenadiers will dribble out the rest of the clock here. Falcons getting a... Still there. Half court shot. Oh boy, folks. Falcons drills the half court shot. Good God, way to finish this game. Such an exciting <laughs> game, folks. But that is 101 to 88, your score. A dramatic finish to this one as Grenadiers take home the 13 point win in the home opener. Anything you got, Chase? I mean, what a finish there. The Falcons are playing until the final buzzer hitting that half-court shot. But, I mean, the big difference in this game you're going to take away and look at is the points off of turnovers. The Grenadiers turning the Falcons over 16 times, scoring 28 points off of that. They won the rebounding battle as well, even being undersized, 36-34. And they scored a lot of points in the paint, 38-24, to taking the advantage in that category as well. They'll walk away victors by 13 points and start 1-0. and And real quick, we'll go through the scoring line. Glenn Hill had 30. Jacoby Hendricks with 23. 16 for Wales Jr. Armani Carr had 10. 9 for Javon Jackson. 6 for Lauterbaugh. 3 for Caleb Brown. And 2 apiece for Price and Stewart. And you've got to love the play tonight by Hill. And especially the play by Hendricks, a new face on this team. Made a huge impact in this win today. And that's going to wrap things up here from the Activities Building. I'm Jay Speaker with Dawson Swift. The Grenadiers win here on opening night, and that's going to do it here from the Activities Building. Thanks for joining us, folks. Have a safe trip home on the Grenadier Sports Network.